Please join me in the call to worship. I invite you to repeat after me. Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Blessed is the coming reign of our ancestor David. Blessed is the coming reign of our ancestor David. Hosanna in highest heaven. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Prayer of Approach Creator God, we come before you this Palm Sunday to share in your love and to share in the passion of Jesus. Be with us in this hour and in our life to come. Amen. at South Army United Church for us to tell the story of the events leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus as a drama, usually with children and youth. On Palm Sunday, we celebrate the excitement of Jesus entering the city with the crowds cheering him as their savior and waving palm branches as he parades by on a donkey, followed by his disciples. That is our wonderful Hosanna parade, which was so much meaning behind it that Jesus was going to come in with strength and power, and then he arrives on a donkey? The people were shouting Hosanna, which means, save us, help us. This year, we tell the story through scripture readings from the Gospel of Mark and a small cast of actors silently creating tableaus of various important moments in the story. Normally, there would be a lot more actors, but due to COVID, we have used social distancing during our filming and our photos. Please know that although some images may show us without wearing a mask, when not on film, we wore masks and followed all the necessary safety procedures. One more change we made this year is that we did not continue the story to complete Holy Week with the excitement of Jesus' resurrection, which we normally do when we have the church school involved. This year, we stopped at Jesus' burial. The whole People of God curriculum suggests that if we do not relate to experiencing the passion of Jesus, the suffering and the rejection, and rather rush through to the joy of Easter Sunday, we miss out on a deeper understanding of what it means to follow Jesus. Mark's Gospel reminds us of the many times that Jesus was abandoned by his friends. During the Last Supper, they drank from the cup and professed their loyalty to the end. Then, they betrayed Jesus. They could not keep watch when Jesus was praying. And when one denied knowing Jesus three times, even though he was warned that this would happen. The tableau included in today's drama accent the trouble the disciples had walking with Jesus through these Holy Week events. Does this encourage us as believers, to question how the story of Jesus' passion brings meaning and support to our life today? What path do we choose to walk when, like the crowds of Jerusalem, we wish the story ended happily with the excitement of the palm procession? Do we, like the Twelve, deny or abandon Christ's way in our world? when it involves personal risk and personal possible sacrifice? Or do we embrace the work that Jesus' passion shows us when we need to restore the relationship between God, people, and creation? Do we walk the servant life and give the word that sustains the weary even when we ourselves are weary? We hope this drama gives you pause for thought and prepares you to see the passion of Jesus with servant eyes.
let us now walk with Jesus through the last week of his life. The Gospel of Mark 14, verses 1 to 2, the plot against Jesus. In only two days, the eight-day festival of Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread would begin. The high priests and religious scholars were looking for a way they could seize Jesus by stealth and kill him. They agreed that it should not be done during Passover week. We don't want the crowds up in arms, they said. Jesus was at Bethany, a guest of Simon the leper. While he was eating dinner, a woman came up, carrying a bottle of very expensive perfume. Opening the bottle, she poured it on his head. Some of the guests became furious among themselves. That's criminal, a sheer waste. This perfume could have been sold for well over a year's wages and handed out to the poor. They swelled up in anger, nearly bursting with indignation over her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why are you giving her a hard time? She has done something wonderfully significant for me. You will have the poor with you every day for the rest of your lives. Whenever you feel like it, you can do something for them, but not so with me. She did what she could when she could. She pre-anointed my body for burial. And you can be sure that wherever in the whole world the message is preached, that what she did is going to be talked about admiringly. Gospel of Mark 14, verses 10 to 11. Judas agrees to betray Jesus. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the cabal of high priests determined to betray him. They couldn't believe their ears and promised to pay him well. He started looking for just the right moment to hand Jesus over. Uh, Gospel of Mark 14 verses 12 to 16. On the first of the days of unleavened bread, the day they prepare the Passover sacrifice, his disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparation so you can eat the Passover meal? He directed two of his disciples, go into the city, a man carrying a water jug will meet you, follow him, ask the owner of whichever house he enters, the teacher wants to know, where is my guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you a spacious second story room, swept and ready. Prepare for us there. The disciples left and came to the city, found everything just as he had told them, and prepared the Passover meal. After sunset he came with the twelve. As they were at the supper table eating, Jesus said, I have something hard but important to say to you. One of you is going to hand me over to the conspirators, one who at this moment is eating with me. Stunned, they started asking one another, it isn't me, is it? He said, it's one of the 12, one who eats with me out of the same bowl. In one sense, it turns out that the Son of Man is entering into a way of treachery well marked by the scriptures, no surprises here. In another sense, the man who turns him in turns traitor to the Son of Man. Better to have never been born than to do this. The Gospel of Mark 14, verses 22 to 25, The Last Supper. In the course of their meal, having taken and blessed the bread, he broke it and gave it to them. Then he said, Take this is my body. Taking the chalice, he gave it to them, thanking God, and they all drank from it. He said, This is my blood, God's new covenant poured out for many people. I'll not be drinking wine again until the new day when I drink it in the kingdom of God. Mark 14, verses 27 to 31. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. Jesus told them, you're all going to feel that your world is falling apart and that it's all my fault. There's a scripture that says, I will strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. 
But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you, leading the way to Galilee. Peter blurted out, Even if everyone else is ashamed of you when things fall to pieces, I won't be. Jesus said, Don't be so sure. Today, this very night in fact, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. He blustered in protest. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. All the others said the same thing. Mark 14, verses 32 to 42. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. They came to an area called Gethsemane. Jesus told his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him. He sank into a pit of suffocating darkness. He told them, I feel bad enough right now to die. Stay here and keep vigil with me. Going a little ahead, he fell to the ground and prayed for a way out. Papa, Father, you can, can't you? Get me out of this. Take this cup away from me, but please, not what I want. What do you want? He came back and found them sound asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, you went to sleep on me? Can't you stick it out with me a single hour? Stay alert, be in prayer, so you don't enter the danger zone without even knowing it. Don't be naive. Part of you is eager, ready for anything in God, but another part is as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. He then went back and prayed the same prayer. Returning, he again found them sound asleep. They simply couldn't keep their eyes open and they didn't have a plausible excuse. He came back a third time and said, are you going to sleep all night? No, you've slept long enough, time's up. The son of man is about to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's get going. My betrayer has arrived. Mark 14 verses 43 to 51, the arrest of Jesus. No sooner were the words out of his mouth when Judas, the one out of the twelve, showed up and with him a bunch of thugs sent by the high priests, religious scholars and leaders brandishing swords and clubs. The betrayer had worked out a signal with them. The one I kiss, that's the one seize him and make sure he doesn't get away. He went straight to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The others then grabbed him and roughed him up. One of the men standing there unsheathed his sword, swung and came down on the chief priest's servant, lopping off the man's ear. Jesus said to them, what is this? coming after me with swords and clubs as if I was a dangerous criminal. Day after day, I've been sitting in the temple teaching and you never so much as lifted a hand against me. What you ha in fact have done is confirm the prophetic writings. All the dis disciples bailed on him. While all this was going on, Peter was down in the courtyard. One of the chief priest's servant girls came in and seeing Peter warming himself there, looked hard at him and said, You were with the Nazarene, Jesus. He denied it. I don't know what you're talking about. He went out on the porch. A rooster crowed. The girl spotted him and began telling the people standing around, He's one of them. He denied it again. After a little while, the bystanders brought it up again. You've got to be the one of them. You've got Galilean written all over you. Now Peter got really nervous and swore. I never laid eyes on this man you're talking about. Just then, the rooster crowed a second time. <coughs> Peter remembered how Jesus had said, Before a rooster crows twice, you'll deny me three times. He collapsed in tears. It was a custom at the feast to release a prisoner, anyone the people asked for. There was one prisoner called Barabbas, 
locked up with the insurrectionists who had committed murder during the uprising against Rome. As the crowd came up and began to present its petition for him to release a prisoner, Pilate anticipated them. Do you want me to release the King of the Jews to you? Pilate knew by this time that it was through sheer spite that the high priests had turned Jesus over to him. But the high priest by then had worked up the crowd to ask for the release of Barabbas. Pilate came back. So what do I do with this man you call the King of the Jews? They yelled, nail him to a cross. Pilate objected, but for what crime? But they yelled all the louder, nail him to a cross. Pilate gave, him, gave the crowd what it wanted, set Barabbas free and turned Jesus over for whipping and crucifixion. Mark 15, verses 17 to 18. The soldiers make fun of Jesus. The soldiers took Jesus into the palace. They dressed him up in purple and put a, a crown plated from a thorn bush on his head. Then they began their mockery. Bravo, King of the Jews. Mark 15, verses 22 to 32. Jesus is crucified. The soldiers brought Jesus to Golgotha, meaning Skull Hill. They offered him a mild painkiller, wine mixed with myrrh, but he wouldn't take it, and they nailed him to the cross. They divided up his clothes and threw dice to see who would get them. They nailed him up at nine o'clock in the morning. The charge against him, the King of the Jews, was scrawled across a sign. Along with him, they crucified two criminals, one to his right, the other to his left. People passing along the road jeered, shaking their heads in mock lament. You bragged that you could tear down the temple and then rebuild it three, in three days. So show us your stuff. Save yourself. If you're really God's son, come down from that cross. The high priests, along with the religious scholars, were right there mixing it up with the rest of them, having a great time poking fun at him. He saved others, but he can't save himself. A Messiah is he? King of Israel? Then let him climb down from that cross. We'll all become believers then. Even the men crucified alongside him joined in the mockery. At noon, the sky became extremely dark. The darkness lasted three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus groaned out of the depths, crying loudly, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders who heard him said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran off soaked a sponge in sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. But Jesus, with a loud cry, gave his last breath. At that moment, the temple curtain ripped right down the middle. When the Roman captain standing guard in front of him saw that he had quit breathing, he said, this has to be the Son of God. There were women watching from a distance. Among them, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and Joses, and Salome. When Jesus was in Galilee, these women followed and served him and had come up with him to Jerusalem. Late in the afternoon, since it was the day of preparation, that is, Sabbath Eve, Joseph of Arimathea, a highly respected member of the Jewish council came. He was one who lived expectantly, on the lookout for the kingdom of God. Working up his courage, he went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate questioned whether he could be dead that soon and called for the captain to verify if he was really dead. Assured by the captain, he gave Joseph the corpse. 
Having already purchased a linen shroud, Joseph took him down, wrapped him in the shroud, placed him in a tomb that had been cut into the rock, and rolled a large stone across the opening. Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of Joseph, watched the burial. Unlike the disciples in those days, we know how the story ends. Still, during the next days, as we go about our daily business, let us hold the story of Jesus' passion and death very close to our hearts so that we might more fully experience the good news of Easter morning. Be, Be gracious, gracious unto us, us according to your mercy, O God. God. Lift, Lift up, up the light, light of your countenance upon us and give, give us peace. Us. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you.